Whether it's the hour plus long wait on a weekend at P.F. Chang's, the questionable quality of the ingredients at Panda Express, or the annoying wait times and delivery fees for local Asian restaurants, you've always got a good excuse to take on takeout classics in your own kitchen. Today, we'll make chicken lettuce wraps and broccoli beef that are far better than the restaurant fare. Sound good? Let's dish out. To get started with our chicken lettuce wraps, heat a nonstick skillet over medium heat and add a couple tablespoons of olive oil. While that heats up, go ahead and finely chop or dice eight ounces of shiitake mushrooms or the mushrooms of your choice. Set those aside, and now that your oil is hot, you're going to add one pound or 16 ounces of lean ground chicken, or you could certainly use the protein of your choice. Cook that over medium heat, crumbling it up with a spatula until it is just about cooked through and nicely broken apart. At this point, you can add in your mushrooms, along with half a cup of finely diced white onion. Stir all of that to combine and cook it for about five to six minutes until the onions are softened and the mushrooms are leaching out some of their moisture. To this, we're gonna add a tablespoon each of freshly minced ginger and freshly minced garlic and cook that out until it is just fragrant. Again, about one to two minutes. Next up, we're gonna add in about a quarter cup of soy sauce. We're not putting any salt in this, so this is the seasoning for the dish. A Couple of dashes of toasted sesame oil. And optionally, if you want a little punch, you can add some sambal or chili garlic paste. And a quarter cup of hoisin sauce. This is an Asian barbecue sauce. You can usually find it in the international aisle at your grocery store. Give all of that a stir to combine and cook it for two to three minutes so that everything can get to know one another in the pan and the flavors will come together. Lastly, we're gonna add in a small tin of chopped water chestnuts. All the exact ingredients and amounts will be on the website as well as down below in the description. But since these water chestnuts are already cooked and ready to eat, all you need to do is warm them through and we can plate this up. A lot of restaurants use bib lettuce, but I actually really like romaine leaves. I think they're a little more hearty and stand up better to this. Uh, warm chicken filling. Whenever you're ready to serve them, spoon a decent portion into each of your romaine leaves. Garnish with some fresh mung bean sprouts, a few sliced green onions, and there are your chicken lettuce wraps ready to serve. A nice healthy, filling, crunchy, delightful appetizer, or honestly even a good entree. Speaking of entrees, one of my favorites at the Old Panda Express is the broccoli beef, but sometimes it can be a little suspect if you know what I mean. So, we're gonna make our own version. As with any good stir fry, you wanna prep all of your ingredients beforehand because once you start cooking, it's gonna go fast. I just sliced up two or three large green onions. I'm giving the same business to two large cloves of garlic, and now we want a thumb-sized piece of ginger, which I am going to peel, and then finally, dice. Please use fresh ginger and fresh garlic in your stir fry. It really makes all the difference in the world. Dried or jarred stuff just doesn't do it. At least not for me. I'm gonna get that ginger and garlic set aside and take a small white or yellow onion and just cube this up into little bite-sized pieces. It's only gonna cook for about a minute or two, so we don't want them to be too large. Finally, we need some fresh broccoli florets. So just use a knife, turn the broccoli crown upside down, and slice off each of those florets individually. If you have any that are really large, you can cut them in half. Once you've done that, go ahead and get your broccoli into a microwave-proof or safe bowl and cook on high for about five minutes to steam it and cook it. Now here I've got half a cup of beef broth. I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, a tablespoon of soy sauce, and a couple tablespoons of oyster sauce. And I am apparently going to struggle quite mightily with the oyster sauce, so um, just give me a moment here. By the way, making your own stir fry sauce, again, so much better than that bottled stuff that you can get in the international aisle. I highly recommend it. Plus, you can control all the ingredients and flavors that you put in there. For example, if you wanted it a little bit spicy, you could add some sambal, as I'm about to do. That cornstarch there, about a tablespoon, that's just going to help thicken everything up. And then we need a little sweetness. So I'm going to add in roughly a tablespoon of brown sugar. You could certainly use honey or maple syrup as well. Finally, of course, we are going to need some beef for our broccoli beef. 
I'm gonna be using sirloin meat here, uh, and I'm gonna to check to make sure that I'm cutting it against the grain so we have nice short meat fibers. Um, sirloin is a great option for this. It's beefy and lean, it cooks quickly and evenly, but ribeye would work, filet if you're feeling uh, fancy. Even something like short rib would be just fine. The important thing here is you wanna cut it into even bite-sized pieces so that they cook evenly and so that you're not trying to chomp on massive pieces of beef when you are eating the final product. Now let's check to make sure we have everything we need, and I believe we do, including that steamed broccoli, so we can head on over to the stove and get cooking. Over medium-high to high heat, add a tablespoon or two of oil to a wok or large skillet, and cook the beef. You may need to do this in batches because you don't want to overcrowd the pan. You really want to get some nice color on those pieces of beef. And really after a minute or two, they should be ready to flip. Another minute or two on that other side. And then if you do need to cook in batches, which I did, go ahead and get that first batch out, wipe your pan out, add some more oil and proceed getting some beautiful brown charred colors on our pieces of beef. Once all of your beef is cooked, go ahead and remove it from the skillet, set it aside, add a splash more oil, and we're gonna add in that chopped onion as well as our garlic and our fresh ginger. Give that a stir. Pretty much gonna be stirring this constantly at this point. That heat is very high. We don't want anything to burn. We want it to just cook very slightly. Add in your green onions. Maybe reserve a couple for garnish. That fresh steamed broccoli. All of the beef and any accumulated juices. That is flavor. And finally, we are gonna dump in our sauce. Now you can pretty much immediately kill the heat because there's tons left in that wok and just go ahead and start stirring everything. Brown sugar is going to caramelize on the outside of the meat. Cornstarch is going to help it thicken. And this is uh, just about ready to eat. Pro tip here, make sure you get this off the heat pretty quickly because otherwise it will continue to cook, reduce, and get a little bit too sticky. You got to plate it up next to some mounds of steamed white rice. I imagine you know how to do that and a nice big serving of our broccoli beef. Make sure you clean that plate up, you slob. Can't serve that to anybody like that. And finally, we're gonna garnish with the aforementioned reserved green onions. And to make it extra special, I'm going to sprinkle over some tuxedo sesame seeds. That makes it official, you know. So I highly recommend you give both of these dishes a try, put your own spin on them, and let me know what you think in the comments down below. This is a really awesome riff on takeout food. That beef is super tender, we didn't overcook it. That sauce is sweet, a little kick from the sambal, and of course nice and umami from the soy and the oyster sauce. Really enjoy it, I make this quite a bit around the house, and I hope you'll add it to your rotation as well. But no matter what you do, have a great week and always make something delicious.